Crossing. Better be Animal Crossing. No. Animal Crossing, Animal Crossing! <laughs> The Animal Crossing series seems to make its players so intensely happy. We're living in a culture where consumer outrage is king and companies frequently miss the mark. This uh, an out of season April Fool's joke. Ooh. For Animal Crossing fans, they'll lose their minds over something as little as new bird baths and mushrooms. But what is it about these games, other than fulfilling the millennial pipe dream of owning a house, that gives its players the warm fuzzies? Let's take a deep dive into the themes and mechanics of Animal Crossing to figure this out. Any media has the potential to shape your behavior. Some people watch their favorite YouTubers and see them admired and rewarded for their generosity, creativity, and humor, and they want to emulate that behavior. Video games though, especially those with morality systems, bring interactivity to the table, making them influential on a whole new level. Defending a beggar in Fable can make your character more beautiful, while theft in Oblivion can land you in jail. Stop right there, criminal scum. While this doesn't stop us from disregarding ethics and gleefully creating chaos every once in a while, the fact is these games promote some behaviours while punishing others. Games tend to follow a utilitarian ethical model. This basically means whatever action benefits the most people and minimises harm as much as possible is typically the action that the game will reward. Killing Covenant soldiers in Halo, while a violent action, helps save all sentient life from destruction by the Halo Array. Thus, the game endorses the idea of protecting the greatest number of lives. Life and death are common stakes in narratives such as this. So how does a game like Animal Crossing, where the most intense thing that can happen is a scorpion chasing you, deal with punishing and rewarding player behavior? Rather than the popular utilitarian model, Animal Crossing seems to operate under the ethics of care. This essentially means that there's a greater focus on personal and emotional factors when it comes to decision making. Other moral theories tend to focus on rational thought, which is still super important, mind you. We should always strive to learn and consider the facts of a situation. But with the ethics of care, there's a greater focus placed on subjective factors such as relationships, and those are considered valid motivators for your decisions. Animal Crossing applies this theory by training you to be a better friend. Friendship is the foundation of these games' punishment and reward system. In other games, forming relationships between characters is usually a means of gaining some other benefit. In Fire Emblem, for example, raising the support rank between two characters can improve their stats when they fight alongside each other, or, in recent installments, can give you another unit to work with. In Animal Crossing, the relationship is the benefit in itself. You rarely, if ever, receive any rewards from your animal friends that tangibly impact the gameplay. Let's say one day you gift Rosie a new t-shirt, and each time you see her wearing it, it just sparks joy inside you. The only thing you really have to gain from talking to your animal friends each day is little interactions like this, and a weird emotional attachment to a talking cat. But you do it anyway, because it's nice, and you care. When it comes to punishment, Animal Crossing doesn't sap your health or your money if you fail a task. If Bo invites you to his house sometime within 24 hours and you flake on him, he'll simply be disappointed. But to get to this point where he invites you over, you've already invested time into that friendship, so Bo's sadness is a real and effective punishment. And gosh, Bo is much cuter when he's happy. Say your favourite villager wants a particularly expensive piece of furniture. Maybe if you don't buy it, you'll have enough money to complete a new town project, which will clearly benefit the most people, and therefore be the correct choice under utilitarianism. But you give the furniture to your friend anyway. Why? Because you care about them, and it's simply a nice thing to do. If you haven't played much Animal Crossing, you might be wondering what the big deal is. The villagers are just bundles of code after all. Whack them with your bug net, push them into pitfalls, who cares? Well, the game actually works very hard to position these characters as autonomous beings with their own little lives and their own little feelings. This is largely thanks to the real-time game world. Time passes according to your console's system clock, so if you return after having not played for a while, things may have changed. Aside from pesky weeds and cockroaches, 
characters may have redecorated their homes and will comment on the fact that you've been away for a while, maybe that they've missed you. Of course, these are just random computer generated events, but the image created is that your animal friends have been going about their daily lives independent of you. This illusion of liveliness saturates the game. Characters can be found walking about the museum, exercising, dancing, even watering flowers, eating and napping without any interaction from the player. They won't just pace back and forth like in Pokemon or be found in default locations as in Stardew Valley. Villagers even talk to and about each other, suggesting that you are just one part of a broader social network and that you should therefore do your part to maintain that network. When you meet a new villager, often they'll be excited about making friends with you. If a villager moves away, they may express disappointment that they didn't get to know you better. This encourages you to take advantage of your other neighbors while they're still there. They're impermanent and you can impact how they feel about you. So why not take advantage of them while they're around? Now, unless we assume video games cause all evil and violence in the world, they probably don't. How can all this friendship training actually impact us in reality? Well, violence is not something typically rewarded in our day-to-day -day lives, so shooting people online isn't enough to convince us that that's okay in reality. Relationships, on the other hand, are something we all encounter. Animal Crossing conditions you to be more affectionate and generous, and this is something that can carry over to your real friendships. I understand creativity and customization are key reasons why people love these games. Decorating your own digital home is super fun after all, but there's something else making Animal Crossing stand out from games like The Sims. If we look to the series' origins, it's quite clear that valuing relationships is part of this it factor. Katsuya Iguchi, the creator of Animal Crossing, has stated in interviews that the games concern three themes, family, friendship and community. He wanted to explore these concepts because he was so lonely after moving to Kyoto to work for Nintendo. He left his family and friends behind in Tokyo, over 450 kilometers away, and this distance helped him realize that spending time with those you care for is essential to one's happiness. This was the motivation behind Animal Crossing. Iguchi wanted to recreate the feeling of being with his family, to design a space where they could interact even if they couldn't play at the same time, just as your villagers interact with the world even while you're away. The Postal Service, which allows you to send gifts and personalised letters to villagers, is one of only two facilities available from the outset in New Horizons, and Island Togetherness is one of the game's recommended goals. I think it's clear that friendship and doing things for those you care about are still values woven into the very fabric of these games. Hey guys, I just got done um, recording this video. It took me ages and I worked really hard on it. So if you've gotten this far, I'd, I really appreciate it. And if you're willing to give me a like, that'd be super cool too. Um, I've just finished uni and I'm looking forward to spending more time making videos. So um, yeah, subscribe if you'd like to see more.